Okay, first thing I'm going to go over are some area formulas because in order to find volume, we do need to know area. So starting with a rectangle, the two dimensions that we look at when finding the area is length and width, and it actually doesn't matter um, where you put length and where you put width. Um, same thing with a square, we have length and width. The only thing that's special about a square is that the length equals the width. And the way we find the area of a rectangle and a square is we do length times width, so we just multiply the two dimensions. Okay, in a triangle, um, we have uh, the two dimensions that we look at are what we call base, which is one side of a triangle. So I have two triangles here. So the bottom part we're just gonna call base, and the other part we call height. So height is the distance from um, I guess you can say from the point um, straight down perpendicular to the base, that's height. Um, and the way we find the area of a triangle, since basically a triangle is just half of a rectangle, we just do one half base times height. Or if you want, you can write 0.5 base times height. So we multiply the two measurements and then we just take half of it since a triangle is half of a rectangle. All right, so for a circle, this is one that we're familiar with since in the previous unit we talked about circles. The dimension that we look at for a circle is the radius and the way we find the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. So just remember if you're given the diameter, we just divide that by two. All right, so now looking at um, three-dimensional shapes, since that's what this unit is about. Uh, the first shape is this one. It looks like a box. We call it a rectangular prism. And it's important to know the shape of the base because that's gonna help us find uh, the volume. So in this case, the shape of the base of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. And I'm just going to highlight the base. So actually on a rectangular prism, the base is not always the bottom necessarily. But um, in this one, um, we could just highlight the bottom for a rectangular prism. OK, so the three dimensions that we worry about when finding the volume of a rectangular prism is the base is just length and width. And that third dimension is height which is how high um, the rectangular prism goes. All right, the next shape, this is called a triangular prism. And the base is a triangle. Um, so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna highlight the base. So even if the triangular prism is on the side, the base is still just the triangle. The base is, again, not necessarily the bottom. So in this one, again, we have um, the dimensions of the base, which we know is base and height. But then our third dimension, which makes it three-dimensional, is the height of the prism, which I use a capital H to describe. Um, so when the shape is on its side, the height doesn't necessarily go up and down. Um, it's how far back this goes because it's how many stacked triangles we have. And in this case, the triangles are stacked back. All right. The next shape is a cylinder. And the shape of the base is a circle. So I'm highlighting the base. And the dimension we look at with a circle is the radius. And then we have our third dimension, which is the height, capital H. So one thing you should notice about um, these three shapes here on this side is that they're all what we call prisms, meaning the bottom and the top of the figure are the same shape. The bottom and the top are the same. Okay, the next page, um, we look at shapes where there's only one base. So the two shapes that we look at 
um, are the square pyramid and the cone. So this top one is called a square pyramid. and the shape of the base is a square. Okay, and there are such thing as rectangular pyramids, it's just that we um, only look at square pyramids just for to make it a little bit simple. Um, <clears throat> so again, the two dimensions we look at here are length and width, and then we have our third dimension, which is capital H, which represents the height of the three-dimensional shape. Um, and that height is if you were to stick like a stick straight through the point um, and it's perpendicular to the base. So capital H is the height of the pyramid. Through the apex, which is the point, and perpendicular. to the base. All right, the next shape is called a cone, and the shape of the base is a circle. And on the circle, we look at the radius. And then, just like the previous one, there's the height. All right, this last shape is kind of in its own category because there is no base, because it's circular all around. There are no flat parts of the shape. So this is a sphere. And the only dimension that we worry about in a sphere is just the radius. All right, so now we're gonna look at some other um, properties of three-dimensional shapes. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about are cross-sections. So a cross section is the shape that is exposed by making a straight cut through something. Um, so we're gonna look at the shapes that we talked about and think about the um, two different co cross sections. So we're only gonna talk about cross sections that are parallel to the base. So parallel to the flat side of the shape and also perpendicular, okay? So what I have here is I have the shapes just so we can kind of visualize. So the first one is a rectangular prism. If we were to cut parallel to the base, that would be like if we were to cut the shape here and um, see what shape is exposed by making that cut. So if we were to cut the shape here and open it up and look at what shape it is, um, that would be a rectangle. And the same thing if I were to cut perpendicular to base, meaning to cut it this way and open it up and see what shape it is, it would also be a rectangle. Okay, so now looking at the pyramid. So if we were to make a cut parallel to the base, so the base is on the bottom here, if we were to cut it this way, the shape that would be um, on the flat side would be a square, since the base is a square. And then if we were to cut perpendicular, meaning if we were to cut it this way, that shape would be a triangle. All right, with a cylinder parallel to the base, we cut it this way. Uh, the shape would be a circle. And if I were to cut it perpendicular, so if I cut it this way and open it up and looked at it, it would be a rectangle. Okay, with a cone, if we were to cut parallel to the base, again, it would be a circle. And then if we were to cut perpendicular, so down here through the, the point, that would be a triangle. And then a triangular prism parallel to the base, it would be a triangle. And then perpendicular to the base, if we cut it this way, it would be a um, rectangle. So I'm gonna pause right here so we can see some trends. So if we look at any time we cut parallel to the base, um, the shape of the cross section is the same as the base. So parallel to the base, the cross section is gonna be the same as the base. When we cut perpendicular, the only two shapes formed are triangles, 
um, and rectangles. And the only difference between the two are the shapes that have two bases. So for instance, the prisms and the cylinder, the cross section is a rectangle. For the cone and a pyramid, the cross section is a triangle. Sphere is the only one that's different. There is no base, so we can't really make a cut parallel or perpendicular. No matter how we cut a sphere, I could make any cut. The shape of the cross section will always be a circle, no matter what. Okay, so now looking at the next thing, another property of three-dimensional shapes. It says on the right, or actually, oh yeah, so on the right is an oblique cylinder and on the left is a right sim a cylinder. In simple terms, describe the difference between the two shapes. So the only difference between these two shapes is that an oblique cylinder is slanted and a right cylinder stra stands straight up and down. So an oblique cylinder is irregular and slanted. A right cylinder stands straight up and down. And we can actually use the words oblique and right to describe um, any type of three dimensional shape. All right, so now looking at rotating figures. Um, it says, what shape do you rotate in order to form the following figure? So for a cylinder, if we think of this in terms of like a drill, if I were to take a drill that looks something like this and this kind of rotated around, it would form a cylinder. So this would be a rectangle. For a cone, we would need a pointy shape because a cone is pointy. So if we think of a drill bit that looked like this, and this rotated around, this would make a cone. So that would be a triangle. And for a sphere, if we had a drill bit that kind of looked like a circle and it spun around, that would make a sphere. So um, in terms of all of these figures, um, they are all circular in some way. Um, so since we are rotating, rotating happens in like 360 degrees, we think of a circle in that case. All right, now let's talk about translating figures. It says translate the triangle on the isometric paper, connect the corresponding vertices to form a 3D shape. So if I were to take this triangle and translate it, and then I would connect the corresponding vertices well, that forms a triangular prism. So we can do the same with a rectangle. If I translate that and connect these corresponding vertices, that would form a tri uh, rectangular prism. And if I had a circle and I translated it and connected it this way, that would form a cylinder. Um, this should make sense because these three shapes, remember, have two bases and when we translate we're basically copying and pasting it. So we have two bases and then we're just connecting the sides to make um, the lateral faces. Alright, so now we're going to talk about stacking figures. So it says, what shape is formed when you stack the following 2D shapes? So if we think like stacking a pancake. So if I took a bunch of rectangles and stacked them up, that would form a um, rectangular prism. If I took a bunch of congruent squares and stacked them up, that could either form a cube or a rectangular prism. If we stack similar squares, meaning the shapes got smaller and smaller and smaller, so if I had a square and then I stacked a smaller square, smaller, 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 that's going to form a pyramid. And if we did the same thing with circles and stack them, that would form a cone. 
oh, sorry, uh, for this one. Congruent circles, that's like a stack of pancakes. Congruent circles would look like this. So that would be a cylinder. If they got smaller, if they got smaller, then that would form a cone. If we stacked a bunch of congruent triangles, that would form a triangular prism. It says, what do you notice about the congruent figure? So anytime it's congruent, we're forming prisms or cylinders. Or shapes with two bases. And when we f stack similar figures, the shape formed has a pointy top. 